everyone, and welcome to the Isle of Blivesmoth, the last stream before Alice and I jump on a plane and come to Philadelphia to come and see all you people in Philly. Uh, so, uh, before we hand over, we have some things to do. First of all, social links. Check out our Discord, Twitter, and YouTube. Discord, you can come and be a part of the community. We are now at least a thousand people strong, and it's amazing over there. Uh, Twitter, send me a DM. I'll get you in a game. It won't be this one, but it'll be one like it. And YouTube, you can catch up on this and all the other games on the YouTubes. We have sponsors. Check out Mage Hand Press. I'll be on their booth this weekend. Um, if you come on Saturday, I'm going to try and hard sell you shit. If you sign up early on Friday or Sunday, you could have a game with me. Uh, watch out for the tweets and I'll let you know which times I'm going to be DMing and stuff. Uh, I haven't prepared a fucking thing though, so do not expect anything from me. Ever. That's a good pre- Yeah. Yeah. Great. Hi. Is Justin in the chat? Probably not. I think I've got away with it. Next, the deck of many. Uh, the deck of many. They created the deck of many things. The great deck. The deck of many. Donkeys are aliens. Donkeys are aliens. The deck of many. They created the deck of many things. The deck of many animated things. The deck of many animated spell reference cards and all sorts of other wonderful things, including the Humblewood campaign, which is now available in hardback as of the beginning of this month. Uh, there we have flames right there from, uh, from, um, from, from Kayla. Thank you very much. Um, also check out Hero Forge. You saw the minis on our startup screens. If you want to create your own, head over to that link. Although be warned, it's a lot of fun and you will lose a lot of your social time to it. Let's go around and say hello to everyone. Starting with our wonderful, in fact, let's just hand over to Kayla. Kayla, introduce everyone. Hi. Oh, okay. Uh. <laughs> I'll start with myself, I guess. I'm Kayla. I'm that Kayla person. I'm gonna be a great DM for once. Yeah, this is gonna go great. I believe uh, everything except for the four once, because you've always been a fucking amazing <laughs> DM. Aw, go on. Uh, real yeah, it's gonna be a fun night. Also, if you want to see more of me, not next monday but the following monday uh i play on tact and diplomacy at on um, monday nights 10 30 it is such a passion project for all of us and we love it so much and it's just torture puppets it's just poor poor torture puppets the entire cast we just we just beat up our characters so if you like watching that come on over it's great Yay! <laughs> uh, we'll go around and we will go next to... We will go to Kai. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Kai. I'll be playing Javier Belcor on this show. And you can find me nowhere but here, really. So uh, stay tuned for maybe not next week or the week after the next episode. But just, I'm excited for what we're going to do today. Yay! We will go next to Kent of Weebs. Hi there, Kent Weebs. You can find me here on Wednesdays. I'll be playing D'Artagnan. <laughs> um, it's going to be a fantastic time. Let's go. Let's get this bread today. I'm excited. You should be excited too. All right, I'm gonna give it back to Kayla, the lovely Kayla, that Kayla person. All right, over there, right there. Okay, wait, there? I, I don't know which way I'm pointing. This is gonna be fun today, I promise. Do you need flipping okay. again, Ken? Do you need flipping yes, again? Oh, I do. Damn it. I'm sorry, I'm You, you were I'm already so flipped right, damn it. I probably was, and I'm such an asshat. <laughs> sorry, I'm an arse. Yes, that is the British pronunciation. <sighs> Ken, what what are we gonna do with you, you poor poor thing? <laughs> we'll leave Ken to su to sulk in his corner, and we will go next to Bonishka. I got it right this week. Yes, yay, Good. yeah. Hey. I'm Bonishka. I'm Bonishka here, and on Twitter, um, I play Luca Bucket Boots. And we are going to get into so much stuff, I think. I'm pretty excited about that. Oh, yeah. And then, Scrat, you want to introduce yourself again or no? Uh, yes. And also, I okay. have another challenge to the cast as well. But first, I'll be... 
I've been playing Shelby Snickwickle. Shelby, uh, he's the, the company bard, and I keep everyone on their toes and healthy, and I nearly stabbed a thing, I think. I'm not I very think good you did. Stabbing. No, I shot, shot things. stuff. Yeah. You shot stuff, though. Uh, my Jeez. challenge... My challenge to all of the cast is uh, I'm going to PAX Unplugged this weekend and I'm a broke ass bitch. So like, can we think of some 20, do 20 quid donations that would just like help me out that might get the chat? Like, you know, you know, at the moment it's... we've got the wild magic surge, you know? Magic it's... surges, hey. I, I did compile like three tables, so I am prepared. <laughs> Let's Hi. go half price magic surges. <gasps> 10 yeah. pound magic surges. Kent Weebs here. Um... I have crickets and bugs downstairs. Um, if you want me to eat a bug, it'll be $10 <laughs> for Scraticus. So. Can I, I also uh, have beans. I also have beans. I, have I beans don't have any beans. I'm a streamer. I'm a fucking or a freaking streamer. And I, see, that's my usual go to is beans. But like at the end of the charity stream, I said that if we hit 3K, I would chug the whole box of them and Why? we got like 250 dollar donation or something so i chugged the whole box and i don't uh, scraticus what is wrong you with you poor thing. Freaking... so okay. you can torture ken that's you can torture me i need to go find them i'm pretty sure i have an inkling on where they are so um Hopefully you stay. Wait. wait. Oh gosh. Okay. Now I, I love like you, I have chat. To, now I have to go over that, and I I don't uh, no. <laughs> no. I got I got nothing. Over. I got nothing, man. I need I need Zelda in the game stat. Uh, I mean, the only thing I might have is hot sauce, but I'm terrified of doing that. <laughs> Do I have any hot sauce? No, I don't think I have any hot sauce. I'm, 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 my parents, my mom hates hot sauce. I, I have hot sauce. Hot sauce? I I mean, they're not here, but my roommate, he does have the last dab from Hot Ones. That is, yeah, it's the last, last dab. <laughs> the last dab you'll ever dab. Right, one dollar dabs. One one pound, sorry, one pound dabs. Yeah, <laughs> every pound, every pound whole is cast just dab. every the whole cast. Yeah, just wait, wait. There's some free we... ones for you, but no more. No, don't. Do are we really? Are we really doing money for dabs? One pound <laughs> dabs. Guys, guys <laughs> please send money so I can dab. I don't dab anymore because Scrap made me not to. So, um, please, what I like I do? to dab. No, no, no. Kayla said you dab. couldn't dab. Oh. Well, I said, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get this straight. I said he couldn't dab all the time. Because he dabs all the time. <laughs> Even when he's just like, yeah, you're right. Like, it's... <laughs> okay, okay, I that's, agree. that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Kayla and no I... No more free in, ones. In voice calls, I will be like, hey, Kayla, how's it going? What's up? Like... Sorry, those are two free ones. I should donate you two dollars. I really <laughs> give us your money. Um, but yeah. So today I will be eating these. Well, oh, these are like wild crickets from your lawn. No, they're like <laughs> food grade was... crickets. No, I thought you were gonna go oh. out and catch one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> so. That's that's what I have. And I, I have these. I'll send these to Scraticus so he can do them. There. Oh wait, wait, wait. Sorry. Yeah, I need to get um, like another bulk order of Bean Boozled in. I need to just put a bunch on my wish list and see how much people hate me. I hate you. Oh, say a hollow's coming with a dab. Okay. Well, right. the whole cast or just one at a time. I think it's okay. oh, the whole cast. The whole cast. Is one cast. Okay, three, two, one, guys. Let's go. <laughs> if nobody if nobody screenshot at that, um I'm gonna be severely, severely disappointed. <laughs> the gift dabs that are gonna come out of tonight are just gonna be I'm so excited. Thing. I need more gift dabs. Like, dab. <laughs> dab gifts? 
if we if we like if we <laughs> if we if we do this in like if we, I think we should try and do it in character, you know, just try and make it seem really subtle, which will be easy for Ken. Yeah. But <laughs> well, if I think I, I, you know, it's very easy to just. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, but D'Artagnan is sub subtle though, like. Is he? Is D'Artagnan. He? Okay, D'Artagnan's a little bit. <laughs> we're st I'm still trying to figure out D'Artagnan's like mindset lately. I was thinking about this today. I'm like, I'm not sure if I'm playing D'Artagnan the right way that he should be played. So maybe next week there's going to be a different D'Artagnan. Well, I, I always heard that like after three sessions is normally when people figure it out. So that's what I'm like. I'm still figuring it out too. So yeah. I, okay. I last thing. You. Last thing before we get started. How much for the crickets? Um, okay. If you want me to do a cricket, 15 pounds. If you want me to do a grasshopper, which is way bigger and disgusting, um, 20 pounds. Sounds good to me. I'll update that. And then be five, five pounds for one, 10, 10 pounds for two, or 10 pounds for three. Yeah, those are beans. If you want 10 pounds for three, I can do 10 pounds for three. Okay. Ken, you're amazing. Scott, this is how much I fucking love you. And I'm yeah. sorry for cursing. Wait, what? what is the curse level on this stream? I always forget. I, mean, I don't know, time. but we could make We're a swear We're not PG. Box. We're not PG. <laughs> this wait. stream is not <gasps> PG, audience. We could do a swear jar. Oh my god, wait. Wait, do we want to do a swear jar? Do we want like to enact like a Kent Weebs no cursing for like 20 minutes thing? And if I do, I have to then donate? A dollar for every time they find a curse. Ken, I don't want to wrangle all your money out of you. <laughs> well, I meant more of they donate and we have to stop cursing and using particular curse words. Yeah, that works too. Yes. Amping it up. I'm not sure how this works yet, but hey. Should we play the game? Yes. Sounds yes. Like we shall <laughs> play the game. And the dab was clipped. Yay. <laughs> I'm so excited for this. There will be All right. more. <laughs> the, getting started, the last time we were all together, uh, you had been on the ship heading to the island. Uh, you met with a captain who brought you to meet the navigator, Jackson, who the definitely not slept in a long time paranoid <laughs> navigator uh but he gave you the map told you he had contacts on the island if you could find them told you a lot uh certain people got whispers uh and then you went out on the ship after getting called up and were attacked after you know finding another ship rep ship rack <laughs> jesus um you were attacked by a bunch of merfolks and a shark boy. You all fought. Shelby almost died. That was fun. And once you had cleared the deck and set the bodies on fire, especially of the monstrosity that you came across, you went down to sleep for a while until you got woken up by Jackson again, who was ranting and raving and telling you to not go to the island to get off. Shelby put him back to sleep. Really mostly for his own health. Yeah, mostly for his own health. <laughs> Poor thing. Ken, what are you doing? Just gifting subs out. What are you doing? Thank you, you beautiful bugger. Hey, okay, but there's holiday emotes and um, they're really cool. I appreciate you. I got a flaming snowman's head. I don't know what to do with that, but I love it. You'll figure it out. So, that's where it brings us today. You are all in the ship. You slowly all come to consciousness in your own, well, most of you in your own beds. Shelby is now sleeping by D'Artagnan's feet, but it's still pretty cozy. You wake up, and the bed that had once been occupied by Jackson is now empty. He's not there anymore. 
What would you guys like to do? He just got up and left. He didn't even say good morning. He didn't even thank you for the services that you did. I top and tailed for him. You did amazingly, thou. That's how it's done. Did he at least make the bed, Kayla? No, it just looks empty. Help, he's going to start grumbling and start prestidigitating and, and fixing the bed. He was raised in a barn. Maybe this is why he doesn't sleep. It also might be a little bit of sailor habits. The other two, what, is there anything you'd like to do? These are hammocks, right? So they're <clears throat> yes, they're, but there are like blankets supplied over them. Oh, okay. Pillows, if that's what you want to call them. Luca doesn't make the bed either. She kind of just like throws everything onto the floor and walks out. What is wrong with all of you people? Britannian will grab the, the sheets on his cot or hammock or whatever, fold them, fold them, fold them, put them at the corner of the cot, and just walk out. Acceptable. So you make all the beds? Yeah, I'll make all the beds. <laughs> Wait, I'm still in it. <laughs> oh, like when, when I get when I get round to you and you're still in it, I'm gonna be like, Javier. What? It's time to get up. I know. <sighs> Everyone else is awake and the navigator's gone. Well, didn't I say, expected that. Didn't say good morning or anything. Hmm. He doesn't seem zippo like that. If I look out the window that's near my, um, English is so hard. Hammock. <laughs> near your, yeah, hammock. There you go. Um, is it still just like water or is there any sign of the island uh, already? It's, <clears throat> what you see outside is it's, it's mostly waves as far as you can see. But you do notice further out, the more you look, it looks kind of hazy, like a fog is kind of creeped in. So that means you're getting close. But visibility is very bad today. All right. Um, I think once he realizes that Javier leaves his uh, hammock and seeing that Shelby is like busy folding stuff, you think, I'll just sleep. Like, Oh, I'm a go. You know, like, <laughs> and he goes up to the, uh, I think, to where the rest is having food or something like that, or where they're hanging out. Of course, breakfast is always prepared. It's, I mean, it's not great breakfast. It's what a ship would typically have that kind of just stuff that lasts a long time. But yes. Okay, quick question. What is the um, fish level, like, what is the fish that are in the water at this moment in time? Like, what kind of fish do we have if, if D'Artagnan were to jump into the water, use his mind powers of, hey, fish, come here, and then catch a fish for breakfast? What, 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 would, what would you say the level of delicious food that would be? So basically, you want to Aquaman this? Yeah. You want to be the Pied Piper of fish? I sure do. <laughs> Um, Seems fishy to me. <laughs> well, if you want, you can jump off the side, or the ship is moving pretty fast, so you might oh, want to stay tethered to the ship. So, so we're still moving. Oh yeah, ship's okay. still moving. So this isn't like a cruise ship where we're done for the night and we're just like chilling and chilling. No, nope, okay, it's been moving so. all night, as far okay, as you can great. tell. I would like to tether myself 
I'm going to probably do an acrobatics roll to see how, like, oh, gosh. beautiful of, like, a whew, kind of dive I do into the water. Um, yes, this is this is my life right now, and I'm here for it. You're living your best life, Ken. I'm trying the to, Dark Ken is life. trying to live his best life, so let's do it. Oh, oh my god. It is... It is Olympic level what you do. Well, I mean, raised in the sea. Yeah, of you, course. you step up on the railing. You have a rope tied around your waist that's tied off mm -hmm. to part of the railing. You get up there and everybody is kind of staring. The deck crew is like, this guy is absolutely nuts. And then seamlessly, as if you've been doing this your entire life, because you have. You oh. dive off and they're in awe of your perfect form and grace. You hit that water and like the tiniest little dip, just no splash whatsoever. It's perfect. 10 out of 10. Okay. And now I you're in like, the water. I would being like to find a boat, but in the water. Right, right, right. Um, I would like to like scan, I guess, for, well, can I just be like, Hey, fishy, fishy, come here. Give me a persuasion check. <laughs> okay. Let's do this. Let's get this grub. Oh, okay. Okay. Persuasion? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. All right. We're going to do this, and it's going to be beautiful. Oh, Color God. Girl. Do, do, do. Okay. Maybe not that great, but, like, <laughs> are there any dumb fish around? <laughs> You take a moment and you're like, all right, that was awesome. Now, time to bring in the bacon. Reach out and you go, hey, fish. You get one lone fish, one separated from the rest of the school that comes up to you. It's about that big. Yeah, can I help you? What's, what's, what's wrong? You need to let your people know that they are in great danger and they need to come with me right now. Danger? Danger? Yes. D danger. Danger. Shark? Worse. Shark? Kraken. Shark. Kraken. Crack, crack, Kraken? Kraken. Kraken, yes. Kraken. Kraken. Roll me a deception. For You're sure. lying to a fish. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much, V's Knees, for that donation. Let us know what you want to do with it. We'll remind you of the donations. Wild Magic Surge is a half price at 10 quid. Uh, you can make Ken eat uh, free beans and a cricket for all that. for all of that. Uh, or you can make me a grasshopper and get us to do a bunch of dabs. So, Kayla, on a 25? On a 25, <laughs> this fish is just... It's terrified now. It's kind of like shrinking back in the water, just cracking, cracking. You must warn them. Crack come with me. Warn crack them in. come with me. Cracking! And it turns around and just darts off. Hopefully they... It comes and warns everyone, and it'll come more back to me. And yeah, so I'll just. How long do you wait. stay in the water? Well, I can breathe underwater, so I'm there for a while. Just a Should rope. I, oh, just pulling me. I'm just like. Roll me just a straight D twenty. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> You're there for a while. Ten minutes, twenty minutes, thirty, forty, an hour, and I come back. They don't come back. He, little fish, 
Okay. You might have convinced him so well that he got terrified and just ran off. Swam off, you know. Could I try to probe out again? Give me another persuasion roll. All right, sounds good. This time I'm going to be like, great fish friends, come join me for a inspirational swim of championship. Thou art blob like something random. Don't forget you have auto successes and advantages if you really want to use them. I mean, I don't think an auto success for this is that important. So <laughs> I'm just letting you know, you want to catch breakfast and be the king? Okay, there we go. 16. Yes. With a 16, you, <laughs> you time it, you wait for the right moment, and then you call out to the ocean. You hear your voice echo through the waves. You get a decent-sized school... You get their attention as they kind of slowly come in. Kraken? 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 They're still very (laughs) weary. But they swim up to you. Swim? Kraken? Kraken, swim. swim. You heard about the Kraken? Kraken. 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 Do I have a bag? Do I have a bag? I have a bag. So I'm just gonna try to swipe them up into the bag and hook, like, and tie it up. The moment you, well. Safety, I, oh, while I'm going, safety. Deception mm, roll. Uh, deception, yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought, okay. <laughs> At least your deception's better. Yeah, a few of them definitely buy it, and they're like, safety, 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 safety. And then they just kind of dart in. (laughs) Others swim out of the way, saying Kraken, still. Safety, safety. But you get get a decent haul, about mm, 20 or so, out of a big school, decent-sized school. The moment that you loop them in, the rest of them are like, swim, swim. Swim, swim, swim. And I and I just I just go, swim. They immediately dart off. <laughs> no one else can hear it though, as you pull yourself back up on deck. But you definitely hear it from the bag. Little tiny voices, just kind of like water, water. <laughs> oh no! As your bag drains <laughs> onto the ship deck. You get back up on ship. The crew has been taking bets on if you were dead or not. (laughs) You get back up on deck and the crew has been taking bets on if you're dead or not. You see a few Mm. disappointed faces. You see a few happy faces as they all kind of like disperse and exchange money. But you caught some breakfast. You got about 20 fish. Food. And then I'm like, ah, that's fish talk. (laughs) I've got us breakfast. Go downstairs. You can present it to the cook, who will. You know what? I'm going to charge the cook. I'm going to car- charge the cook because he charged us for the freaking Kent. ale. We're only it. another persuasion check at disadvantage this time. If you want it so damn bad. Of course, I'm going to roll it at disadvantage. What? Like this is. This seems like the perfect time to mention that we have one wild magic surge, and Ooh. Kent needs to eat a cricket. Thank you very much for using <laughs> for the donation. And I feel now that like the cricket is almost a punishment for for the for the fish. Um, yeah. Okay, you a rude yeah. boy. I was rude. That was so bad. Okay, guys, this is my cricket. What did they roll in chat? Okay. Uh, no, uh V's knees, please use the roll command. Yeah. You can totally uh totally do that. That's a good point. Oh, it's, mm, it's so bad. Oh, it's so bad. Well, wow, why isn't that working? Let's try turning it off and on again. Yep. You know what, Kayla? I'm not going to roll. Um, I'm just going to be... I brought you a wonderful present. Cook. 
Good morning, Cook. How are you? I've brought you a wonderful present. Just because he's not responding back. C Hello, Cook. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Well met, Cook. <laughs> he's a bit busy, but he eventually turns towards you. I know it's hard to be on a, on a ship all day. I got fish. Where did you get Fresh. the fish from? Obviously the water. I got it from the water, yes. I talked to the fish that came for safety in my bag. I'm not paying you for it. I didn't ask you to. I said a gift. What do you want? Friendship. Sure, whatever. Hand cool. it over. I'd like some ale as well. That'll be a gold Friendship. piece. Friendship. That'll be a gold piece. Uh, well, here's your fish. I mean, you look like you need some meat on you. He's a very rotund man. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. But I mean, hey, the crew likes you more. You gave them fish. And for once, they ate pretty decently. I mean, he's a good cook, so everybody kind of goes in, goes to town. Word spreads around the deck. And you guys have a good breakfast. Heck yeah. He's saying to any crew member nearby. Uh, yeah, uh, the captain, uh, D'Artagnan, not of this ship. Uh, he, uh, he, uh, sometimes takes requests. If you have any requests for fish, just let me know. Over, over the course of breakfast, um, Luca will come up to D'Artagnan and kind of slide in next to him. And, um, uh, Mr. Captain Storm, sir, um, do you teach how to do that diving Swimming thing. Ah, uh, yes. I, I can teach you how to do the jumping off of the ship and, and falling gracefully into the water. And then you just breathe in the water. It's so easy. Oh, so so mm. that's not that's not teachable then. I mean, look at these gills. Oh, I don't have them in yet. <laughs> huh. But yes. I mean, I can teach you the fundamentals of the swimmy strokey thing. Yes, if, if that would be very helpful, and I would love to take lots of notes if you don't mind. Um, do you mind if I just sketch? And she kind of gestures at your the gills. Oh yes, 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 yes. Here we go. Wait, w the gills would be on his ears, and um, like a little bit of slitting right here. Yeah, and probably on his under of his chest. Who? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so she'll just kind of, food goes down beside her and she's just very pointedly sketching you as you're eating, making sure to pay close attention to all the gills and just in her little notebook. Draw me like one of your French fish. Stop. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's what came to mind. Um, D'Artagnan, you're sitting there. You're posed up for, the, like, letting her draw everything. Like, this, showing her off the this and the ears and everything. Ears. She looks down for a moment and, like, finishes sketching one part and is about to move on to another and looks up. You see her eyes just all of a sudden turn bright orange. Wait, 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 wait. Luca's eyes turn orange. Yep. She looks down, oh. like, has normal colored eyes, and then all of a sudden she looks back up, and they are, like, bright orange. Now, okay, are they orange and glowing? Or are they orange and, like, burning? Are they orange? No, just orange. The iris part is just orange. Luca. Miss, 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 Mrs. miss, 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 mi
Did you know your eyes just turned orange? Is that a thing you can do? And I beg your pardon? Um. My eyes are brown. No, they're bright orange. And thou art very pretty. Well, thank you. Um, but they no, look like a jack-o'-lantern on, on All Hollows Eve. I'm not familiar <laughs> with that. We have that down in the water. It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful uh, traditional thing that we do on the uh, mid solstice. Maybe once I learn that um, breathing gill thing, maybe I'll come see it. Fantastic. But and no. do I have a mirror on me, or do we have? Is there anything shiny that I can like show her, like the eyes? Is there like anything? I mean, you might have a metal pitcher. That's about okay. it. I can just bring up my dagger and be like, "Look into this." Your eyes are bright orange. Oh my! Just kind of pull out her her notebook and start. I'm gonna hold it up so she can just sketch it for herself. When when did this? No, when did you first notice this? When did this happen? Around thirty seconds ago. Forty seconds. Now 42 seconds. Do do I feel any different? Nope. Just bright orange eyes. Ah. I wonder if this is a result of the sea air. Interesting. <laughs> Sorry. You get about three quarters of the way done with your sketch noting eyes are orange, strange color, something about jack-o'-lanterns at the bottom of the sea, and then you look back up at the blade again to, like, finish one more note, and you're back to normal. Oh. Hmm. Oh, they've kind of changed a little bit now. Yeah. They're a little chocolatey. I've been told that. I'm just kind of looking around the, the deck to see if anybody's like watching. She's specifically looking to see if there's anybody who looks like they might be like, casting magic or something like that. Um, very Not really. These, this crew doesn't strike you as the magical type, really. Maybe Jackson. Maybe. Jackson. She kind of Maybe? gives Shelby like a side eye glance. See what Shelby's up to. Shelby will be uh, eating some fish. With a knife. Eating the fish. Uh, oh, 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 he's so precious. Sorry. Wasn't. Shelby, Shelby didn't seem to do anything. He's too preoccupied with his food. She's not not super convinced that there isn't some kind of funny business going on, but she'll sit down and kind of pretend like she's writing in her notebook while really like side eyeing everyone, kind of looking around. You take notes and you're some kind of magic maybe happened. Not sure. It's the moment that you write down Jackson with like a question mark. You kind of look up again and you look around. He's not here either. And the last note is keep eyes peeled. <laughs> Don't you go back to eating breakfast? Hey, Bonnie. Our chat dice roll is broken, and I randomly selected you. Do you want to roll a d100 for us hitting 10 retweets? Yes. Thank you very much uh, for the retweets and support, everyone. I'm a broke-ass bitch, and I support you. Where no, wait. I appreciate you supporting me. Lucky 13. All right, we're five away from 20. 
So you have your breakfast, get all eight, you have your notes going like mad are already like a clear page and a half of just pure notes. Javier, is there anything you would like to do or just enjoying your breakfast? Mm, Javier was a very fast eater. He like he didn't get a lot of food and he He also didn't sit very close to the other three, maybe at the same table but on another end. And he seemed a little bit preoccupied with him with himself mostly. He's thinking about what Jackson said the other night and he's pretty much thinking like when they're gonna arrive. Fair enough. Y'all eat your breakfast, eventually go up on deck. The ship is slowed down considerably from what you can tell. You're not moving quite as fast. And you look out through the fog. And you can just barely see it. It's about the same time the call comes up from the top. They've spotted the island. You're in your final approach. The ship slows down even more, coming to a a complete halt in the water, just slowly rocking back and forth. They're not getting too close, but you can definitely see in the fog the form of an island. Tall, sheer cliffs coming up. One part of it before you arcs up very, very tall, like like a mountain almost, but it just cuts off right in the middle. And on top of that is a even taller figure from what you can only assume is the lighthouse. And it looks vaguely like a human. Kind of. Maybe? But you definitely see land ahead of you. It's about this time that the captain comes out of his quarters and shuts the door, comes up to you. Well... Seems we've found land. It's almost time for us to part ways, I suppose. Have you all slept well? Uh, I slept very well. Tell me, did you, um... Do you see, uh... Jackson since we woke up? Yes, um, about that. (laughs) Unfortunately, um... You weren't the only ones that he bothered last night. Seems he made quite the noise below deck, and a few of the crew members had to subdue him. I apologize if he bothered you in any way. Well, I hope he is alright. Can I roll an inside check on him? Go ahead. Nineteen. You get the sense there's definitely more to the story that he's not saying. Yes. Made the mistake of tidying up earlier and I can't see my kazoo anywhere. (laughs) Is that a problem or a blessing for us? Scrat, did you leave it? at that one place where you keep things that you didn't know that you kept it there. Okay, I know where it is. I messaged Alice is on her desk. All right, then I hope he will uh, recover his marbles quite soon for the sake of the sheep. We hope so too. It's it's not well when one of your crewmen are suffering, especially one that we need so vitally. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much to Ghost Me Please, uh, who has donated 500 bits. You have an advantage to gift. If you gift it to the DM, they can use it on us at their will. Well, um, if you like, we did prepare a rowboat. Unfortunately, we can't get closer to the island itself. We well, get like closer a, with the ships. Yes. You mean like a war forged? Yeah. No. A, a robot? 
No, rowboat. Oh. Shelby. Yes. We did, uh, we did pack extra supplies for all of you. But, um, unfortunately, like I said, we can't get close with the ship. We would run the risk of anyone on shore or anything coming after us. So, unfortunately, you all will be in charge of rowing the ship to rowboat the shore. I think we will be fine. Thank you for all your services and, um... Thank you for uh, your hospitality. I thank you. If it weren't for you, who knows, I could have lost even more men yesterday. That is true. Oh, um... Anyhow, show us the way and we will be on our way. He brings you over to the side of the ship. There is a rowboat made of strikingly similar material as the ship itself. The ship alone is this sort of like gray, almost driftwood kind of texture to it. The rowboat's the exact same. It's this grayish wood that you imagine, especially in this fog that's around you, would definitely, definitely kind of like sink in and be hard to spot. But he gestures over to it. There's a few boxes with extra supplies, extra food, a uh, bit of rope in there, an extra ore, the usuals. Oh, Captain Thornton. <clears throat> yes. Are you going to be waiting here with your ship, or are we going to have to wait for you to come back to, to get us? How are we actually going to get back to the other location? Well, uh, luckily you do have the um, things, is that correct? Yes, you have the earring pieces. Essentially, what you will do is get in contact with Father Swan, who will get in contact with me. Unless any of you know that sort of magic... So we have to wait like a day and a half before we can get off this island if we need to. Not a day and a half. We'll be circling the island. Trying to stay out of sight, mostly. Unfortunately, if the weather does clear and this fog doesn't stay around, we might have to go out a little further, but... So, wait, question. Why can't we just give you one of these earpieces, or I, one of these, and so we can give direct contact to you, the ship. There's this, it's a little weird having a middleman to get our ship requirements again. If you wish to give me yours, but then you'll be disconnected not only from your group, but Father Swan as well. Ah, uh, hmm. I can sing really loudly if someone needs to give one up. Ah, uh, just... They are just planning. very expensive. Most likely. So who is going to roll? The silence says that I am going to have a bad time. <laughs> now I'm not the strongest, but I can actually. I'm not that bad. I, I can. I can have a go at rowing. I thought I was a lot weaker than I am. <laughs> Wait, Scrat, what's your strength? It's like a fourteen. Oh my god, Shelby is stronger than me. <laughs> Shelby might be the strongest. You- Yes, he is. <laughs> Swalbard! Oh. I have a zero in strength. I'm a warlock, leave me alone. <laughs> uh, to be fair, it makes sense. You guys all kind of pile on and they slowly lower the, uh, the rope, the- yeah, rowboat. Jesus, I cannot talk today. They lower the rowboat into the water and you hit the water. Shelby, you've done this before. It's not the first time. Mostly because D'Artagnan likes to stand at the front of the rowboat and kind of do one of those George Washington poses. That way. Go that way. Go that way, sir. Let's go. And so being his, his friend, 
second mate. You do all the row in, so he looks pretty fucking cool. So it's always funny as well because he says go that way and that way and like points, but obviously rowing as I am, I've got my back to him, so I just guess. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. It's pretty true. Uh, just like <laughs> that way, <laughs> Shelby. Let's go onward. No, no, that way, that way, Shelby. No, that way, Shelby, uh, Shel- Shelby, Shelby. Shelby. Yeah, oh, we're going to hit the rocks again, <laughs> Shelby. Uh, Eventually, I'll figure it out. I find it's a lot easier when you like when you row to a, a shanty song, you know, something like a good nautical song to get you uh, get you in the mood. God. Whoa, we're going to our Blizzmouth. Whoa, back to the island. Whoa, we're a D and D party. Whoa, oh, in this kraken infested sea. <laughs> um, Shelby, there's no krakens in here. Oh, um, not according to them fish. Called <laughs> 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 oh, <I laughs> <pulled> out. <laughs> so I will need you to make a either a strength check or a athletics, whichever is better for you, Shelby. Uh, well, since I'm a bard, I have jack of all trades, so anything would be better than my base. A flat eight. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult. Uh, normally, when you you row, it's it's just D'Artagnan in the boat, but with two extra people, it's a little a little difficult. Plus, you're pretty far out to sea. It's still pretty choppy, so you're hitting all of those waves and. St- st- you're struggling. You're trying. Is it just... Yeah. Kayla. Yes. Can I try something? Yes. Okay. Sure. So What are you trying? <clears throat> I don't exactly know if I can use spells, but since I'm a Triton, I have spells. I have Gust of Wind that I could, like, help push along the rowboat. But I don't have spell slots. But I'm a Triton. Isn't Gust of Wind a cantrip? Uh, it has a big... Here, do you want me to press it? I'll press yeah. it. Give me that spell card. Okay. There you go. Oh, it's a level two. I mean, I'll allow it. It doesn't last very long. It's no, a, no, it's a good push to get you going in the right direction, <clears throat> and it definitely helps Shelby to get started. Yeah, I'm just like, come a me, ha. <laughs> That's the evocation. That's what I have to say for it to gust of wind. The second you do that, and the and the wind is just like blowing from the back to the. It's like a really blue boat, force wind. It's like hit. a blue force wind, and I'm just like, Fwah. you can hear so lucky I'm just broke. like curse in a language you do not know, but it okay. sounds as if he's like wishing death upon a lot of things because his hair is <laughs> just going like this. And just like, as, okay, as Javier's is like blowing like all which way. The uh, D'Artagnan's is like, like that epic, like. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> you are so lucky. I am broke right now. Otherwise, I would donate just to make you eat something. I don't care what. <laughs> I don't I know think I'm... this helps Shelby at all. I think most 90% of this spell has gone towards theatrics. <laughs> yeah, a street. lot of it has. <laughs> it gets a little bit, like a little bit of a, like a bump, in, like a jolt, but it gets you over like one wave and mo- the rest of it is just spent <laughs> blowing your hair back and making you look amazing as you stand up there. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> that way. Let's go that way. It takes a while. Shelby, you are pretty tired, but you get going slowly, going along. Uh, you get closer, again, after a while, about 
an hour, two hours of rowing. You get up pretty close and you get close enough so that the fog kind of breaks and you can see that huge, huge cliffside that kind of reaches around and cups this lagoon, according to your map anyway. Hey, hey, hey. Shall we show the map? Shall we show the map? Yeah. Let's do it. Show that map. So now, because uh, I'm copying from the roll twenty as well, when you click on it, we should all see where you highlight. Yeah, you guys are rolling through somewhere around there, bypassing this small little spit of an island. It's more rock than anything, but this is this large cliffside that reaches around and cups this lagoon perfectly. Uh, and it's tall. It is hundreds and hundreds of feet tall with this large, now that you're closer, you can see it. It's very, it's eerily similar to the lighthouse that you'd seen back on land in Lancaster. But instead of the woman holding the lantern, there is a woman with her arms reaching out as if she's reaching for the mainland. And it's weathered, it's old, and you all are going through, in a very pirate's way, the sea has carved a hole through this cliffside towards the bottom. So there's a few like little alcoves and little holes. And of course, in pirate ways, there are bodies hanging from there. Traitors, you can assume. Something. But as you get closer up to it, you can see maybe not traitors. That headache comes back again. Your head kind of twinges as you look at it and they don't look right something about all of them they're all kind of decayed but they don't look right keep rowing though i need i need a survival check from shelby oh to keep no. to keep the ship going and point it hopefully in the right direction. I will allow other people to help you since D'Artagnan is pointing that way. <laughs> you got this, I believe. Luca is like flipping through her notes and she like points to the little bit and shows everyone that says, don't fall off the cliffs. This is, this is what we are told, don't fall off the cliffs. That's that was meant like to help, but I already got it. With a 15, it's not bad. You have to, like, check over your shoulder a few times. Just make sure you're going in the right direction. You start to, you think, there's the docks ahead of you. It's kind of cloudy, kind of misty. But there's an area over there that's kind of clear, so you try to steer over towards there not hit the town directly because that's probably a bad idea with monsters all over you keep rowing you end up hitting it kind of between the two as you're slowly getting closer and closer to the island is there anything you're doing before you get to land to help yourself be a, make a stealthy approach I think Javier is shushing Shelby at some point when they enter the lagoon, like, your songs are very nice, but maybe we should be a little bit more quiet. What time of day is it? Since you had breakfast, took about an hour with at least D'Artagnan trying to get the fish and betraying them. Another two hours of rowing, it's about midday, but the fog doesn't really seem to be breaking up yet so you do have some cover but it's bright enough outside that maybe somebody's seen the boat from shore if they're looking well maybe. i don't know how this works in a boat um but luca would like to kind of flip through her notes a little bit and kind of like look around and whisper pass without trace Help okay us. So everyone adds 10 to their stealth rolls. 
Okay. Well, I know that one from Lisa watching too much Critical Role. No, I'm sorry. So that one is actually just for me. Oh, just for you? For me. Sorry. Oh, it is. Hmm. No, so each, I... each creature within 30 feet of you, including you. Got it. Thanks. So it would be the whole boat. It is. Okay. Well, then in that case, I'll and... make a stealth roll. Yes, I believe Gone, stealth rolls you, you... from everybody. You had more though, right? Well, I was going to say, like, I don't know how Pass Without Trace works in a boat. I kind of imagine that um, Luca's, like, after she whispers it, she kind of makes wave noises, like, <laughs> and starts trying to get Shelby to, like, row in time with it to kind of make it so that there's no splashing noises. Okay. That works. You can't really see it because you're not on on the bl the island itself. But the moment you cast it, it's the boat already is kind of hard to see with the color of it. But it becomes even harder to see. Essentially, like the waves, in a way, are completely cloaking it. But with that, I'm going to need everybody to give me a stealth roll. Remember, you have plus ten to that, so. Now, what if Shelby didn't try to stealth, but instead tried to replicate the actions of someone who stealthed in the past? Maybe do a little act, you know, and perhaps could roll perform. <laughs> Performance to stealth? Okay, it's ridiculous. I'll admit it. I'll go for stealth. My <laughs> stealth is 39. Jesus. As I'm like, that away! 15, 17. No, sorry, you have to take the 10. I accidentally rolled twice. That's okay. That's still a 20 with the extra extra 10 added on to it. You guys are pretty stealthy, especially with the fog cloaking, you guys. You get up closer to the shore. Doesn't seem like anybody spotted you yet. Anything has spotted you yet. And eventually, you kind of hit land. And the boat kind of goes up onto this more rockier kind of beach. It's not sand, it's more pebbles. But this is definitely closer to town than you would have liked. What would you like um. to do? Sorry, sorry. So, can you ping on the map where we're, we're like, docking? Yes. You guys are about here. Like, towards the bottom south side of land. Bottom south side. Here, I'll ping one more time. Boop! Oh, okay. I see it. Sorry. Boop. Yeah. Great. Great, great, great. So, are we, like, by the... Okay, so we're somewhat close to that city. Town. Yeah. Town. Oh, yeah. Okay. That headache um, is still kind of lingering there in the background. Okay. Um, Can I make a suggestion? I think we course. should hide the boat first. Oh, we can see if there's a smuggler's cave. Oh, as... Well, as perhaps, as... maybe just... Anything like leaves or something would work. It would be a problem if they would destroy our means of escape, since the ship can't come here directly. We can bury it. Can I um, look for anything that has like th thieves can't kind of things around, like any hidden things that like may may have like you know places to hide boats? Give me a perception. Uh, okay. Sound, that sounds about right. That sounds great. Let's do that. Uh, Nothing's really popping up. It's that gosh darn you, headache. If the rest of you want to do a perception roll as well, you to look for someplace to stow the boat or hide it. I'll try it. Oh, that's the wrong roll, probably. Oh. Sorry. What was it? Oh. I'll let Luca do it. <laughs> 
We got this. Thirteen. All right. Can I have Kent and Kai take off your headphones for a moment? Uh, what? <laughs> yeah, you're in this. Oh no! Dong whispers. Whispers. Jesse squared. <laughs> You, Luke is the one that sees it first, maybe because of the more trained eye, but Shelby, you follow her gaze and see it too. Not too far down the beach, closer to town, you see a a smaller shack. It's very run down, very broken. It's kind of obscured by a large boulder but you notice something on the door that symbol that Luca drew for you guys it's burned into the wood not very big it's just there right there in the corner of the wood But you know, probably you could sneak it in over there, judging from how unused it looks, and probably be able to get away from it safely. Get get the boat away from everybody safely. I kind of oh. bring everybody back. Whispers. You're good. You kind of hobo Shelby and point. Yeah, I, I, I see it too. I reckon it's like a rune thing. Maybe it's a death luck sea curse. What are you talking about? Oh, um, there's a, a, a shack that we may be able to, uh, stow the boat in. And it, um, just so happens to have the same symbol. As in Jackson's quarter, or Captain's quarters. Captain? Jackson's. The house of the circle? Yes, actually. Hmm. Well, would that be a good idea? We don't know what this symbol is. I mean, Captain Thornton's been nothing but kind to us. So if he has that, it could be just... So a lot of people are very kind for very wrong reasons. And if I admit, from the second I set my foot up on that boat, I have not trusted the man. Mm. Well, I will just say, if it is a, a sea death curse thing, I can be sure that most people will stay away from it. So, the boat would be likely not to be bothered. <laughs> Alright, fine, fine. Uh, let's, let's do it. It is our best chance. Well, if guess. we're feeling a little bit more confident, we could just put it under the big rock. Yeah, you know, only if we're feeling bolder. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it is you, a rock solid suggestion, but no, stop! Do not encourage it. The voice yeah, of God says, of booming above you." <laughs> this think... might be a rocky situation. I think we've got a few more ideas yet before we hit rock bottom. Stop. Yeah, we're not scrambling yet. Um, let's uh, let's <laughs> let us try to check. So... No. Can I, um, Luca, do you have a sketch of the, the, the house with the oh. circle? Actually. Cause I want to like, I want to, I want to like, so I want to con convey, like, see if that, if it's like completely the same marking on, on the shack when we go up to it. Like, I want to like, look at her sketchbook and then look up, look at her sketchbook, look up. You, 
Sorry, one more time. You wanted to look at the sketchbook and <laughs> sorry, your I got pinged not... in chat and I got angry and now I'm focusing back in. <laughs> she looks angry. She's got a face like stone. I know. I got scared. I got it's scared. Kayla, you're beautiful, but like that. You're okay. No, you're fine. <laughs> you wanted to look at the rune. I want to look at the rune on the shack when we get up to the shack. If we're going to do the shack, I'm only saying that if we're doing the shack, I want to compare the notes to that. Maybe it could be the same or it might be a slightly different rune. Like, you know, runes are very different. Okay. Uh, so basically what you do is you head on down the shore. Are you carrying the no, boat I'm, or I'm dragging like the boat? You're just going to go right up to it? Well, no, I, I'm not carrying. I'm like, we're going this way to the shack. Are you doing it stealthily? Or are you you're just going up to the shack first, not bringing the boat with you? Well, like I want to just know what you're doing. I want to go like if we decide on going to the shack to hide the boat, I want to be the one just like looking at the rooms to see if they're like the same same or if there's some like minor differences to it. Okay. Yeah. If we're that's our plan. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> you're okay. Javier, you're gonna say something. You better help carrying the boat. <laughs> Shelby's already dragging it. All right, I've got it. <laughs> Probably weighs Shelby more than him. He's going to help him. He's going yeah. to help him out because Shelby's yelling too much for his liking. Oh my God. Shelby he... only raised 25 kilos. I mean, but he's strong, man. He's... You... He he's strong. He's like a Jack Russell. He gets it. <laughs> a really fat Jack Russell. <laughs> really hench Jack Russell. Have you seen a farm English Jack Russell? Bulldog. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So how tall is Shelby? Shelby's uh, not very tall two, at all. Two foot eight. That's what I'm saying. At 25 kilos? Two foot eight and 25 kilos. I literally weigh as much as a bag of dog food. You're, a, you're such a small boy. But hench. <laughs> Shelby manages to get it a few feet before you come and help him. It scrapes against the rocks hang on, a bit. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Maybe I can do this without too much help. Are we rolling? Yeah. Oh my god. We rolled for it. Yes. Are you going to help pick up the other side, Javier? Or. Okay. Can yeah. I, I as well? I'll let the 22 stand for both of you since roll that advantage. <laughs> but you... Like give a hand as well. 22, I, I'm just going to take his yeah, roll because no. I don't think anybody else can do better than that. But 22, you guys managed to pick up the boat off the rocks so it doesn't clatter and clank and hit all of these different stones. And you slowly carry it over to this much larger boulder that kind of blocks this decrepit looking shack it's weather worn it's taken some beating from the sea it's, the wood is all set with a lot of salt from the sea splashing on it um but it looks like nobody's been here for a while and once luca points it out you notice right in the corner of the door is one of those marks burned into the wood very small a little bigger than that are we able to tell if it was like burned stroke by stroke or if this was like a brand it looks more like a brand because once you get closer you can see the, like the kind of like additional marks around it like a little tiny square so it looks like somebody heated up an iron and quickly okay the wood with it Can I do a quick investigation roll to see if I notice any slight differences to the to the rune and whatever? Yeah, go ahead. Awesome. I'm just, you know, let's see how good I am at investigating. Okay, oh, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to use that with, well, it looks like it's the same thing, maybe, possibly, I don't know, but it was, it's a rune. Same thing to you. It's the same mark. I check if the door is all right. Do you pull it open or just test the lock? I'm um, probably going to use... Or just test um, the knob. 
I'm probably gonna use something else and see what do I have. Depending on where you draw the centre line, at least some of it's got to be left. I think I... Scrap. I'm using, uh... I think I picked up some driftwood or something like a stick. Something that is okay. around the base. And I'm just poking it, really. Like, I'm poking it from a distance. Sounds like wood hitting wood. Alright, then I'm gonna... Is it like a handle? Like... Yeah, there's like a rusty old kind of like one of those like circle old handle thing. Uh, I think I'll open it. Pull the door open. Kind of creaks as it turns. Now we're thinking with portals. <laughs> you open the door. There is a few things left inside. A couple of old decrepit boxes that look... Like, they got left and forgotten. And it's a pretty nice, sizable shack. Do -do -do -do. Uh, I think I will go in and, like, clear some out so the boat can go in. You pick up some of the stuff. The wood is old. It's musty. Damp. Oh, Doesn't seem like there's much here, though. Unless I you want to give me a perception check for more. I, I, would, I, I think I want to. Uh, Same. If you're offering or investigation, one of the two. I'm doing perception, which is bad. Can I roll as well? Perception, perception or investigation, depending on which one you're going for. Perception. Perception, okay. Yes, because I have a way better perception than investigation. Fourteen, you look around the room. Javier, you don't see really anything. You're more focused on just clearing out of space and getting the boat in as quickly as possible. You're setting down the boat yourself, and you notice something as Javier is carrying out a box of this old something or other. That stuff in there kind of looks like supplies. Uh, Javier, Javier, wait, wait. That box, can I take a closer look at it? Get, of, of course, yes. Um, do whatever you like with it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to like open it up and rile through it. There's some damp matches, uh, <clears throat> a lantern, more rope. Kind of is giving you the sense that Maybe this was a safe house? Mm. This looks like a safe house. Retreat to? Daphne would like to take the rope. Oh yeah, I'll toss it right over to you. Cammy Jewel I'm coming not, in I'm... with that bit donation. Thank you so much. Uh, you can gift a disadvantage to a player or the DM. Sorry. Nope, you're fine. I realized I forgot about the second wild surge, so that, that's going to be a fun thing. I'm worried. Same. It's probably There's not as nice as the worry eyes about. turn orange for 60 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so you stow the boat inside. Do you think you've yeah, done I, a pretty good job? I think I'm going to give everything to Luca so she can, like, itemize and list whatever we found in there, too. Damp yeah, matches, a lantern uh, that's kind of full, some rope, old rations that are not good. Not with that attitude. Still is writing everything down and putting them in piles. One pile, not worth taking. The next pile, we'll take it with it. And it's really, that's just the lantern and the rope. Um, everything else she can put carefully and like tucks in a corner. If you keep going then, through, you find a few pittens, like the things that you tap into rock to hold on to something. Okay. Find a few of those, but... Yeah. She'll finish her list, tear the page out of her notebook, and hand it to um, D'Artagnan. Ah, oh, thank you. 
Good, good notes. Good. No, oh, yes, yes, yes. Perfect. Okay. Seems like we have all this ship shape and in order. Puts it in his inner coat pocket. Great work, Miss Miss Bucket Boots. Happy, happy to help. Oh, you get the boat stowed. Where do you go now? Do we want to go into the the city? I kind of uh, want to. I mean, I remember. Please enlighten me again. Um, uh, Jackson, he wanted us to find two people, and I can't remember where they were. Did he say where they were? He said they were probably. Really Probably around. If they're still alive, they're probably hidden in a lighthouse or something. Oh yeah, that is, that is true. Thank you, Shelby. Are we but, near the lighthouse? So would we want to go directly to the lighthouse? Do we not want to check out that town? Like, just to see if there's like anything He also afoot? said that we shouldn't stay here at night, which seems awfully, you know... Cautious of him. Well, that is going to happen anyhow. <laughs> We're not uh, going to get this fixed before sundown. Jackson true. had recommended, I believe, that the twins would be able to show us around the island, so it may be in our best interests if we would like to find them first. That sounds like a good plan. Sounds very fair. Can we, can we tell... Which way to go to the lighthouse from here? Is it pretty obvious? Oh, yeah. I mean, the fog is still kind of, like, obscuring things, but this large area of just loops around and these cliffs rise up with this tall lighthouse, it's not lit. It is completely dark, which is a little concerning. Maybe not so much because it's the middle of the day, but it's a huge lighthouse in foggy conditions. Hmm. But you know generally, also from the map that Jackson had supplied all of you, that there's just that loop around, you just need to go up there. Well, um, shall we? Yes. I mean, if it gets too dark, we can stay in the lighthouse. If we reach it before dark. That's true, that's true. All right. Allons-y. Tanyan was really quickly busy with a, a, a stray cat that just walked past and was meowing for 10 minutes and, you know, just needed to give it to the roommate because the roommate's door wasn't open. I mean, something. You, you, all, you, you all step out of the, the little tiny shack, still trying to be fairly quiet. You had pretty good stealth rolls. Which way are you taking? Are you going to go through the town or around? Okay, what time of day is it again? Sorry. It's a little afternoon. It's The sun's already past its peak. And then I don't know if this was discussed already, but Jackson had said to only stay a day here or not at night. You said don't stay here at all. Right. But night is also very, very dangerous. Okay. Because I thought I heard him say you want to stay there less than 24 hours or something or like a day yes don't don't stay there for even a day don't right. sleep here he said don't sleep on this hallowed ground or whatever it was all right well i've been hearing it's been cursed as well so the people are taking saying lightly that it's not cursed but then it's also cursed like ashley Bodhi, brody but the, Bro the bartender Bro said there was yeah. cursed too so <laughs> boy Considering that Boyd, we're screwed Boyd. Now, so. I mean, we're going to get a lot of money for this, but which way are we going to go right now? Uh, to the lighthouse. Right. Through the town or not through the town? I suggest not through the town. The reason Agreed. I don't want to immediately run into their business is because we don't know anyone here. We know and no one. It, 
if they know that we are here, if we announce ourselves like, hello, how are you doing? It is us. That might Sorry. not be in our favor. I if shouldn't the ring. twins are trustworthy and they can show us around, they can tell us who not to talk to. Agreed. I find that quite a great idea. Shelby, if you want to sing, you have to whisper sing, okay? <laughs> very well, very good. That was amazing. <laughs> All right, let's go. <clears throat> so you guys start heading around the town, taking a pretty wide berth. There are woods around it, tall pine trees, pretty much everywhere around this. You notice, though, as you get further inland, keeping to these trees, it's weird. The ground is, like, red. The soil that you keep kicking up with your feet is, like, bright red. And it's weird. Very, very strange. Like a blood red or, like, that clay kind of red? Kind of like the clay kind of red, but it's definitely red much redder than you've seen anywhere, really. Can I take a little bit of it? Yeah. Just um, uh, I probably have something to put it in. If not, I'll put it in between something. Just uh, sure. A small take a little sample. bit. Yeah. Keep heading inland. But just as you're cresting around this kind of like precarious spot trying to get around the town. You can still see the buildings. You're giving a wide enough berth. You see... Well, you feel it first. That headache comes back. For a while, it's been a dull pain, something you can ignore. But all of a sudden, it grows and becomes a little bit sharper in your head. And you look over towards the island and you can see one of those monsters, one of those creations or whatever the fuck it happens to be as it kind of meanders around the back of a building, just glamoring. It's wearing different clothes than the other one that you saw. It's wearing clothes. And it has this bulbous arm on it. The other one looks very weak, as if it hasn't been used. It's this huge arm. And its face is distorted, so that half of it's up, half of it's down. And it comes around the back, just kind of clamoring, muttering to itself. And then all of a sudden, Captain, you forget what you're doing. You were supposed to be going to the town, weren't you? Oh, yeah, we're going to the town. Yeah. I'm it's really right confusing, the- like... Confusion happens all of a sudden. So and I'm walking to the town, aren't I? Sharply, you just divert heading towards the town. And that's where we're going to take our first break. Oh, no. <laughs> Wild surges. They're fun, aren't they? I feel... Wait, are we on a break? Oh, no. Not we're yet. <laughs> 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 Oh, our problem child. <laughs> uh, I love doing the wild surges to you. I'm sorry I'm trying to do them to everybody else, but Kent, I just want to pick on you, man. I know. It's fine. I It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's great. It makes sense. It Kent. really does, though. It really does. <clears throat> so, yeah. It's your fearless captain. No, seriously. Fearless captain. <laughs> Shall we take a break then? Yes. Uh, everyone, do as we do. Go and take a go and stretch your legs. Uh, grab a drink. Uh, take a bio and uh, look after yourselves. Go and do all the things that make you human. Uh, maybe go and say hello to a loved one. Uh, and uh, we'll be back here in five minutes. Uh, we'll see you then.
Welcome back, everyone! Uh, we're back. Hey, Kayla. Hi. How are you doing, Scrap? We're doing great. <laughs> I thought you slept eight hours last night. I, I know, and it's like somehow made me worse. Like, I don't know. <laughs> you poor thing. How are you surviving right now? I don't it's know. It's a but wonder. We're, we're flying in like... Uh... Hours? Yeah, I'm doing some maths. We 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 leave here at 4 a.m. EST to get to the airport for 9 EST. Oof. No wait. So nine hours from now. I need to double check that. Wait, Not 4 enough hours. Let's just conclude that. <laughs> While he double checks his hours, shall we get back in? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, Captain D'Artagnan. Ah, oh, yes, I remember now. We are supposed to go into the town, right? Avast over there. And I'm just going to start trimudgling. Like, oh, yes, this is a beautiful. What's the weather like right now? Is it beautiful? Foggy, or is it like misty. It's a little bit cold, but meh. What a beautiful sunny day it is today. I'm just walking to this wonderful town because I'm probably confused as heck, aren't I? It's okay, like great. A confusion spell came over you. It's weird. Very weird. But I, I'm, I just, I'm like, yeah, we talked about this. We're all going to the town and we weren't supposed to be stealthy at all. Walk, 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 loud noises. So I set myself off to the town. What are the rest of you doing? Look, where is he going? Shelby, Shelby, can you stop him? Can I what? Stop him! Play your play your kazoo and levitate him away. Well, is it is it a good idea to play a kazoo right now? Hang on, hang on. Maybe I've got something that can stop him. Um, um, um. He's going to get himself killed. I swear to God. So, I'm gonna cast sleep. Oh, Level okay. two. Roll your dice. Do I counter this at all? Is there a way to not be slept? Uh, if I can't, I, I have to roll more than your HP. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 45. Oh, 45, yes. What's your HP? 43. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Mid-stride, you're like, hey, there's a friend over there. I'm going to go talk to him. Mid-stride, it's like, Ugh! and you fall down, face first, into the red soil. Okay. How long He's am I out, out cold. For? Uh, good question. <laughs> I mean, I don't think it's forever. Um, uh, it. Until the spell ends or the sleeper takes damage, or somebody uses an action to wake him up. Yeah, and uh, I guess it's con it's it's not concentration. How long does the spell last? Duration. One minute. So he's asleep for one minute. I'm just gonna sort of hobble over, being party swole person, and <laughs> pick up the captain. <laughs> it's like, put him I, to sleep. I'm only 195 pounds, so it's fine. I it's imagine probably not the first time Shelby has brought you to this scary <laughs> too. Yeah, you, you know, like when uh, when Jerry picks up Tom or something like that. Uh, <laughs> He's literally just like one finger picking me up. There we go. Let's go. So you pick him up as best as you can, kind of his shoulders on your shoulders, dragging him backwards. Can you give me a stealth roll for this? I assume you want to be stealthy about it. 
I I guess I should. Is uh is the is the thing still up? The the pass without trace? I'm gonna say yeah. So you got a plus ten to it. Twenty seven. Twenty seven. You it's very good. It's you quickly go over there and you get underneath him and just as you start moving you're like quietly readjust so his feet aren't just dragging and hitting everything. And then you slowly creep back over. That thing, whatever it is, kind of just meanders around a bit. Makes more of that, like, guttural weird noise. Turns around and heads back into town. None the wiser. Oh, thank you, God. Uh, when the when the thing's gone, I'll just uh, turn to D'Artagnan and do a one HP damage slap across the face. A stealthy slap, just. Whoosh. I'll time it with the waves, waves with the waves, <laughs> with the waves lapping against something or something. <laughs> just two, two, three. He wakes you back up. I'm awake. Ah, am I still confused though? Nah. You're good. You wake up. Was... Just getting slapped by your by your Shelby, first mate. Why are you slapping me? I was napping. Uh, well, you got a little weird there, Captain. You started walking off towards a lumbering creature thing, and well, we kind of panicked, and I put you to sleep, and then. I wanted to wake you up. Very good. All right. All right. Good job, Shelby. You, quick thinking right there. Uh, wh what a great first first friend you are. Your cheek stings a little bit. It does. Yeah. yeah. This feels like a one HP slap. <laughs> Warm your cockles. Did quite well on my cockles, yes. So, we were going to the lighthouse, right? Quietly. Stealthily. Both of those things. Yes. Speaking. You can take your around the town. You do have to sort of jump over a path really quickly. And for a moment as you're passing over that that pathway, that wide open spance, you get a look back towards the town. Just a brief one before all of you jump across. The streets are filled with those things. At least a dozen, two dozen maybe. Those things are all over. But it's weird. You take a moment from when you get on the other side and you kind of glance back out. You see one of them pulling a cart. You see one of them chopping wood. They're all wearing different clothes. They all look different, but they're wearing clothes and moving things like they're going about life. It's weird. But you're not in there, and they don't seem to notice you as you keep moving through the woods. Head around the other side. You can either take the path up there, or stick to the woods. It's all the way. Woods all the way. Who Good. will be heading this mission? I will. Did you want to say something, D'Artagnan? Oh, I just wanted to do like a perception check to the woods, like pathway, if that's okay. Okay, yeah. Twenty-one. 
it's just after, not too long after you've hopped over the path, you kind of glance back towards the town a bit. Some of the buildings look a little damaged. You do see a few other guys patching up holes, these monsters patching up holes. Like it's like it's normal. Like that's just what they do. You may yeah, there's a hole in the side of the building, you just patch it up. And you also see something else. You see it's close to town. But there seems to be one building in particular that nobody's kind of around at the moment. Um there's a box in it. It's kind of like a You know, when you first go into a town, there's like a little tiny outpost right next to like a gate, like the check-in station where a guard would be. It's one of those. And there's a box close to the door. And there's like a little bit of paper or something sticking out of the top of this box, like a letter box. And mail has been stuck in there. It looks heavily weathered and damaged but there is something there it's up to you if you want to go get it though are we going to go on a mail mission I kind of want to. I kind of want to go on a mail mission. I kind of want to go on a mission of mail. <clears throat> it's not the first time you'd be on a mission to get mail. <laughs> I'm going to roll a cell check and I'm going to try to go on a mail of mission, mission of mail. So you're going to sneak up over there? If the moment you get out of 30 feet of range of Luca. Yeah, it's going to be what I have. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, yep. So yep. just so you're aware. Please be good. Please be good. Please be good. Okay, there we go. It's a 21. 21. Very nicely. You spot this and you kind of like separate. You get everybody to stop. You separate and sneak up over there. Duck around here. Duck around there. Your blue skin helps you hide. (laughs) Helps you hide a little bit more in the shadows. Not be as easily noticed. (laughs) Ta-da. Ta-da. Sneak up to the building. Your headache is starting to get worse and worse the closer you get. There's a lot of those things. But you sneak up to the building and you can just reach inside and pull it out. Give me a sleight of hand just to make sure. Oh, of course, I'll give you a sleight of hand. Um, okay, please be good. Please be good. Please be good. Please, <laughs> please be good. Sleight of hand is 18. 18. You don't make any noises. You pull this out. For a moment there, you thought maybe you would kind of like break it or the it's rusty, but you reach inside and you pull out several pieces of paper. Some of them are just kind of destroyed from being slightly out, but you got a handful of papers. Somebody's mail. I know Luca wants this, so I'm 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 gonna just relay it back to Luca and be like, dun, 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 uh, mission accomplished of mail. You got the mail. I imagine that D'Artagnan was actually humming into his earpiece the entire time. <laughs> yes, you did hear through your earpieces a slight tune and it's like... Shelby this- taught it to me. Yeah. Shelby's like, Captain, whenever you need to be more sneaky, you gotta go. Dun 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 na 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 na. <laughs> so, qu- quietly, Shelby's like <laughs> doing the backup to it. <laughs> I'd like to look through the mail and see what what's here. You look through the mail. It's all addressed to a... Let me get the name. I'm going to forget. It's all addressed to a Duncan McClary. Was that... Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Really quickly. 
Yeah. What were the names of the two friends of Jackson's or the two accounts? Oh, the twins? Uh, yeah, the twins. Eli and Ella. Eli and Ella. Mm-hmm. Ella. Ella. Okay. A. Okay. So you look through, they're all addressed to a Duncan McClary. Um, but these are all addressed to him and they're all like two months old at this point. All the dates on them are really old, not current stuff. This has all just kind of been piling up and nobody's been pulling it out. But you sift through, one of them's kind of like a like a list of like, this. these are the times that people are going to be coming in on this day in particular. Useless. Another one's unreadable because the water has strained all of the ink. But you do find one one letter that's pretty well preserved, um, wax sealed and everything. You break the seal and look at it. It's from a sister, Rosemary. Mm-hmm. And she addresses it. Um, basically, you read it over. She talks about how... Uh, let me see. She has concerns. She starts it out with concerns about the outpost in the south of the island that it's gone silent. There hasn't been any new news from there in a while. This is also addressed two months ago, so keep that in mind. Um, She's worried about it and maybe suggests going to look at that. Uh, She also talks about the eastern lighthouse. Uh, They've been having to do some repairs on the bottom of it because the foundation's been cracking. Uh, and the foreman apparently had found something very interesting underneath it. And they're not, she wasn't sure what it was, but it was something else for him to know. Um, she also Sorry. mentions, yeah. You said that was the Eastern lighthouse? Yes. You not guys the- are at the Western side of the island. The Eastern side also has a lighthouse on the other side. Great. Okay. She mentions that people have been going missing in that that side of the island um but she's been taking care of their children bringing them into the church the orphanage helping them um and she also requests extra supplies be sent over to help that to waylay to the mainland that some supplies needs to stay here in order to cover these new mouths that she has to feed um, and the last thing at the bottom she mentions is that one of the children keeps complaining about seeing monsters in the dark. And so she's asking for uh, extra candles, an extra shipment of candles to help them and light them in the room so that they don't get scared at night. Are we all reading this or is it just uh, D'Artagnan over there? No, this is Luca reading it. Oh. Luca, are you re- relaying all of this information to us, or are you keeping yeah. it for your notes? <laughs> She's kind of, um, <laughs> you know, uh, reading it like, uh, people missing, Eastern Lighthouse, so some, something, something underneath it. Um, doesn't say what it is. Uh, extra candles for the kids. Lighthouses, extra candles, very illuminating. Really? Because I don't think this sheds a lot of light on the situation. Well, I think they're a little in the dark and need some light. Our understanding here Brilliant. is dim. <laughs> um. I feel like we're walking in the shadow of another person's problem. I'm going to give you all disadvantage for a full I, minute. I didn't do shit. I didn't do shit. <laughs> literally the worst. We're the worst. We're literally the worst. <clears throat> Have you? You're all right. You look all waxy. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Sorry, if we don't stop, Kayla's going to lose her wick. <laughs> Scrap. Uh... That one was good. That one was good. 
All right, we're it's, at the we're at the end now. It sounds like the Eastern Lighthouse might be the source in a way. Because if you remember, what the I think it was the captain who said it again. Two months ago was when it started. And okay. if they broke something open two months ago, and then people started seeing monsters. I you mean, also remember they mentioned storms. So it could be that yes. the foundation you? broke in the storm. Something like that. Maybe. Either way, it is my hypothesis for now. So should we now go to the Eastern Lighthouse? Uh, I, I don't think Javier? it's smart. I think we should still find somebody who knows this island better than we do. True. Yes, that's completely what thou was thinking as well. I, yes. Javier sort of looks at the sky and he looks back at the path with like, well, you can probably like see the town in the distance. And he goes like, maybe we should keep walking. <clears throat> Could... I do a really quick like insight onto the like while I, this might be a little retrospect metagaming, but could if I saw any monstrous people doing the work while I was doing the Mission Impossible thing, could I have done a quick little insight on them to see if like maybe not insight, but like something to be like, oh, are they maybe people turned monsters or are these monsters or like something like that? Or would I not have enough time or like this might be a little meta. Never mind. No, you were close enough. If you want to give me an insight, it will be at disadvantage because when you got closer, your headache got worse. Right. Okay. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna do that anyway because. Um, disadvantage. Mhm. Mm All right. Here we go, guys. From what you could gather, it was. It's one of the two. You got you get this idea in your head that maybe they are people turned into monsters, or maybe they're monsters taking the place of people. Something. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna relay that after. Now, is it... Avier, did you say that you think there something was opened or? Or the captain, something was opened, maybe like a curse or something? I don't know. It just sounds like some kind of Pandora's box was opened. Or any, something happened. And I, my guess is that it is at east. Because I have a feeling something had to get opened. Because these things possibly could be human. Oh yeah, I was thinking or so as well. once human. Nearly human. I think once human is the right way of saying it. I agree with that. Because why else would they be patching up holes so normally, but monstrously looking? Who knows? Uh, Javier's gonna start walking again towards the... Uh, the way that we're going. And Lugo, you said you were going to be heading the path? Sneaky like. Because they're not following the road, but you do have the map, I'm going to say you can do a survival check at advantage okay. to try and navigate through the woods and still stay the course of where you're going. Does she want to borrow my compass? Well, I already gave her advantage, so... Oh, damn. Okay. <laughs> Eleven. It's not. It's a little bit rocky. Going. I even have navigator's tools. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Luca is like guiding us with like her hand, like her face, like in like books and like her navigator's tool, but not like actually looking around. And so we get a little stuck in places because she's like focused on her notes and stuff. So it's like. We're here for it, but like we're getting a little, it's a little struggle. <laughs> Pretty much. It's, it's more looking down and walking. Yeah. But 
you kind of veer off a little bit. Then all of a sudden, you guys are on the path, and you're like, whoa, 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 back up into the woods. You kind of veer off again, hit the cliff, and you're like, oh, we are not going the right way. But eventually, you get going along the path. The town is left behind you, essentially. The forest, uh, it's pretty thick in these areas. So you're fairly obscured. Your past without a trace would have worn off. So that's something to consider. Um, But as you keep going upwards, uh, eventually it starts to become more cliffy, much more at an angle. Traveling is going uphill, essentially. And the ground keeps keeps this red color, essentially. It becomes a little bit more rockier, but it's still that red color. Um, You eventually get up to where the tree line breaks entirely. But you see just ahead of you, there's no cover once you pass this point. You see ahead of you, there is a cart being pulled by horses but there are at least two of those things on it, on the cart, driving it, and looks like they are heading up towards the lighthouse. Are the horses normal horses? Yep. So if this was a curse, it doesn't affect animals. I don't know why I'm air quoting. That you can tell thus far. Okay. Okay. I have an idea. I love a good idea. Let's go. Dangerous. And I am not a fan of doing it because they are ugly. But do we want to get closer? and see if they are intelligent. The... the horses? No, the monsters, of course, not the horses. Maybe Why would I want to know if a horse is intelligent? Of course it is. It's very intelligent, I agree. Yes, yes, okay, yes, I'm sorry, I was thinking you wanted to talk to the horses. I... Ah, something's wrong with me on this island, my headache. Ugh. Maybe the monsters only act up like at night or something. Maybe they're actually quite nice during the day. That is what I mean. I will, I, I can try to figure that out. I can do that for us. Mm, that's really risky, though. No, 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 no. It will be fine. Don't worry. It will be fine. Are we all good? I will keep in touch. <sighs> If if you run into trouble, lead them this way. Oh yes, of course, of course, no problem. Also, let us know in our in our our family plan. Yes, of course, no 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 problem, no problem. Um. Uh, I'm gonna leave my bag with you and my uh, jacket. Don't worry. He takes off his jacket. And he folds it up very neatly and he just sits it down next to Luca. And, um... Have I heard them speak, Kayla? Not you. Have I heard them speak? You heard mumbles. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nothing that you could make into words. Alright. Is that information I should have relayed to you? No, 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 it's fine. I need okay. to die. Um, <laughs> um, Javier's gonna step back a little bit and he's gonna be like, don't, don't be weirded out, please, don't be weirded out. And um, Javier changes. And he changes into one of the bodies that they saw hanging near the lagoon. 
but it is alive. It is breathing, it is standing in front of him, in front of them, and it is essentially a copy of uh, the body that is, um, that they saw as they came in. Just a random monster. It, okay, so you do end up changing yourself to look like one of these monstrous things. Yes. Okay. So D'Artagnan is going to like kind of go up a little closer and be like, that is beautiful work. Thank you. Thank you. I work very hard on uh, my creations, really. Um, so, yes, uh, I was going to go up there and uh, I'm not going to I'm going to try not to say anything to him, but... Just meander up there? Help. Yeah, I'm going to sort of okay. like, as casual as possible, I'm going to go up there. I'm trying to find something about it. But yeah. There we go. Mine. All right. Is um, this like a shape shifting? <sighs> Out of character. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, then if everybody would like to take off their headphones, we can do a little whisper with Xavier. Xavier. Yes. You transform and you head back up the beach, heading towards this cart that you see. They've kind of stopped, like they're taking a break for the day. Like they've been on the road for a while, essentially, kind of. Maybe? You can't really tell. What they move, what they do... It doesn't make a lot of sense. But you meander up to them. And once you get close enough... You can hear the mumbles. Just like D'Artagnan said. You get closer... You hear more mumbles. Like, it's more than just the two talking. And you can see, as you get close, their mouths open, and they talk. But it's like multiple voices are all coming out at the same time, speaking over each other, and layered, and in depth. And it's piercing on your ears when you hear this. It hurts your head as you get closer. You still hold form and everything like that, because you've changed. But it hurts to hear, and it's disconcerting. You wander up. You step out into the open for them to see you. You step out onto the path. It's pretty rocky around here. You know your party's still back behind you, but you step out into the path, and they can... It takes a moment before they notice you. But when they look at you, you see both of them kind of real. One of them has this sort of, not a bird beak, but like an octopus beak where its mouth should be. And it clatters really quickly when it sees you. And the other one has these sort of, its eyes are in the front. Not like a normal person's would be. They're on the side of its head. Like a fish. Oh, yikes. But you can see as he looks, even when its face turns directly at you with this flat, broad nose and and just a, t a mouth that hangs much more open than it should. The bottom jaw extended much further than it should be. It turns and looks at you face on. It, You know it still sees you. Both of them see you. The one with the beak, these tentacles come out of its shoulder and they just start lashing everywhere as they both sort of reel away from seeing you and are just... That noise, that mumbling that started out becomes screaming as they're just layer upon layer upon layer of voices just screeching like animalistic and primal 
Yeah, I, I want to say that even to the most stout observers, my ruse is indiscernible and I get advantage on anything that uh, I have to roll to maintain that. Because I am not under a spell. This is literally my body right now. Mm -hmm. They still lash out and they still... Yikes! Big yikes. Um, They're still... F almost like they weren't expecting you. Or expecting something like you. To um, come up towards them. I'm gonna... Saunter just slightly towards them to see what they do what they'll do in the way that I've seen like the other monsters maybe move like that the fish one it moves weird it's it's hands seem short and then all of a sudden as you're watching it it's like they grow like long and thin like stick thin as it reaches out and is quickly grabbing for the reins. And them freaking out freaks out the horses as they're startled and they start making noise as well. Because they are freaking out, I'm going to move closer to them because I have a feeling that I am scaring them. And uh, Javier is interested in what that, what that, why that is, what's happening there. The one with the tentacles and the and the beak. It's weird. Your head pulses with this pain as you get closer to him. And you swear for a moment you see him like sort of like you know how like a cat gets puffier when it gets scared? Its head almost expands, like it's filling up with air at the reaction of seeing you come near. And he's reaching and frantically grabbing for something and you see a spear come out of the back as it points it at you. And it's um, screeching at its other companion who's uh, trying to get the horses to go, apparently. From what I, you can tell. I'm a dip. <laughs> I'm gonna move back and um, I'm not gonna move back in a way that's like, oh shit, like that. More like I'm playing the role of the disinterested monster. If they're afraid of me, I'm just going to be like, whatever. I'm just like, go away. In that sense. Because I find it very interesting that they're afraid of me? Question mark? Like, the one with the spear does hop out of the cart. Uh, I, and is still pointing it quicker. at you. <laughs> trying to like, is like ready, readying up to fight. Um, but the other one is just frantically trying to get out of there, essentially. Um, I'm gonna I'm just like go off the path into the woods, like, peace out, see you later. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a dip. I'm gonna back out and go back to the party. Yeah, pretty much. I think halfway through, um, when he thinks he's sort of out, it's out, he like disappears behind a tree and he changes back into his, uh, well, his, uh, into uh, Javier. Just as you turn back, you glance back at them. You get a good look at the cart as it's pulling away and the, the tentacle one is climbing in the back and is still holding this spear as all the tentacles are wrapping around it and holding it like extra arms. You get a good look in the back and it looks like there's more supplies back there things wood like it's trying to build something or planning to build something javier javier is doing like a i'm an idiot of course wait yes and he just like speeds back to the party as, as stealthily as he can, really. Okay. And we'll get the rest of the party in, shall we? Yeah. Do-do-do, 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 do-do-do. <laughs> I love the dance. Dance, dance, dance. Dance, dance, dance. <laughs> 
so I died. No. Yep. <laughs> We're rolling a new character now. Yeah, I'm rolling a new character. Sorry. That was quite a few times there. Okay, where you were like, and I was like, yeah. Oh. So it was. Um... <laughs> it was great. I loved watching your expressions, and Kayla's just going, and then you have to go and do this. <laughs> Let um, me tell you. <laughs> from your guys' vantage point, you saw the monster creep up, and then the other monsters leave, essentially. Okay. And then Javier appears normal form right behind you. <clears throat> He's sort of like speed walking as best as that goes. And he, he grabs the his jacket, which he puts on first, and then his back, his bag, and he's like, so this is an interesting situation. Um, and I, I have a zero theory, but it is, it looks a little bit, not frazzled, but like he's a little bit like shaken, <laughs> a little bit shaken, just a little bit. If you ask, he won't admit. But they were afraid of me, and I don't mean like, ooh, a stranger. No, they were afraid of me in the way that, say, a a person not like us who does not have any experience, would react to one of them. They were full of fear and screaming, and my head, it was hurting so bad. And then one of them had a weapon, and he wanted to come at me. But in the way that I could see that, that he was... They were not trying to... Well, they probably wanted to kill me, but like not in the way that... Um, uh, that that I would expect a monster to behave, as in they were not defending a den or something like that. They behaved like humans, like how humans would react to seeing somebody like them. I mean, like like the monsters. And as I was running, and I had to get out of that. It was not fun. It, it did not feel good. It's I'm. Um, I will not do so unless you ask me again. But I had the epiphany. Well, not an epiphany, but a zone. The island is cursed, right? Yep. Are we... Are they... Seeing themselves as monsters? Is my question. Out of character, I don't think there's... like. Holy shit. Okay. What if so they think... see themselves as humans and they see us as monsters, even if we are not monsters? I don't know how it would work, but that was what I just remembered that Jackson was like, don't trust anything you see. And then I was like, yeah, don't trust anything I show you either. No, don't, don't mind that. But like, you... He's looking like. Oh, what but they have gone. <laughs> saying is, you think that maybe everyone sees things wrong. Perhaps. And maybe when we find people that we can trust, we shouldn't trust them because they'll be evil. There is a possibility, of course. But that is always a possibility, my little Shelby. It's all right. I've got a good eye for evil people. I can tell them a mile off. Well, we we will have to see. But so far, I'm. This is what. This is a theory of mine, and I just wanted to share it with you guys. But the way is clear now. They have fled from me. Oddly enough. Um. Your your grace, by the court. When um, did you drop the disguise and they see you in your normal form? No, 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 I hid behind a tree. Ah, so we don't know how they would react to an, an ordinary... No. I kind of want to try it. Well, they have fled, and... So, I, like, what if one of us were to go up to another group of them, if there is another group of them, I don't know, 
and one of us were to be a normal looking humanoid not a monster and how would they would react hopefully like we're human and they're human because they perceive their selves human that would be a possibility Maybe we are not cursed, or not yet. Hmm. But we saw one of them out to sea, didn't we? Dead one. Float some, right? It was float. It was filled with, with what? It was drowned. Yeah. Yeah. Don't know. It is simply a. I found their behavior very weird in that sense, very odd. And I think we should so, keep it in mind. It's possible that they are actually monsters, but they just don't don't see themselves as what you're saying. Yes. Like it's I like think they are monsters. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt you. No, 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 sorry. Uh, hmm. Well, this is making this mission a lot harder, isn't it? You can say well, that. No wonder our heads hurt. My yeah, head hurts. I thought more. that was just me. Oh, because no, my head. You get the more it hurts. <clears throat> On that mail mission I went for you, Luca? My head was piercingly ouchies. Uh, I, I appreciate your sacrifice, Mr. Captain. Uh, Captain, Captain. Oh, Mr. Yes. Captain, Captain. Captain, Mr. Captain, Captain. Yes. Thank you. Avast. I was... Yar har, fiddle dee dee. <laughs> Oh yeah, one more thing. I was trying to listen if I could hear what they were saying, but they were saying, and this sounds weird, but they were saying everything. There were two people, so many voices. All at the same time, it was, I have never heard anything like it. It was so weird. So I make of that what you want. But uh, those were my observations. They were speaking everything at the same time. There were, like, I would say a gazillion voices. At once. To each other. As if you were listening to a theater talking. You know, just before a show. So like a crowd of people in one... Yes. It sort of sounded like that. That is the best way I can describe it. Huh. Thank you very much to Sphinx, who donates £40. Uh, with that amount, you can gift everyone a wild magic surge if you like, or you can make Ken eat two grasshoppers, or there's a plethora of other things. 20 dabs. <gasps> Fuck. 20 dabs! We no. could do 20 dabs, guys! Oh my God. Guys, oh, 20 like a dab dabs. A minute. We could dab 20 times. Can we dab? Oh my gosh. So <laughs> I'm not going to dab a minute. <laughs> uh, Sphinx said they oh were God. heading home, so... Oh, y'all choose? Grasshoppers. 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 Y'all are rude. <laughs> <laughs> That's three out of four. But I think I think because because we're going to make Kent do the grasshoppers, I think the rest of us should dab as well. We'll, we'll, okay. we'll grasshopper and dab at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. Ugh, these are so gross. Okay, so two of them? Oh my god, you guys. Wait, no, this is... <laughs> wait, wait, look. Wait, where are you? Look at that. Bon appétit. Yummy, look at the eyeballs. Mm, look at, the look at eyeballs. those eyeballs, man. He's looking at you. Oh, it looks like the Hello. guy from Bug's Life. Oh, yeah! yeah. Num num num. Bye, Hopper. Get that protein. 
I'm you got so a pop glad filter, the mic man. isn't picking up on that. You got a pop filter, man. You can't. Oh god. Oh god. That's not my ASMR. No. Uh. Shelby, sing a song, please. <laughs> Courtesy Kazoo. <laughs> Let's do it again! One more! <laughs> that was two. Yeah, you need- that was two with your hand? Yeah, I thought you did he one. Ate, he ate two. Oh. Wow. Yeah, I saw the second. Damn. And you guys get this for free. <sighs> Kemi, thank you for the, uh, <laughs> for the uh, extra uh, donation <laughs> in there. Uh, you, you, we, we, uh, you can do a, um, what's that, careless whisper on the kazoo? Yeah, wham again. Yeah. Uh, don't die at PAX, thank you. You can also give us a wild magic surge or some other things. Uh, let us know what you want to do. So, it's getting about dusk now, where you guys are on the island. Starting to get a little bit closer to dark. You did see when the cart pulled away with those two things on it, it pulled away going towards the lighthouse. So, it's up to you what you guys want to do. Do we want to test our theory? I kind of do. I kind of really do. I know it's not a great idea since it's getting to, like as a player, I'm like thinking, we shouldn't do it because it's already getting too dark. And what if they like their mindset changes at night? But like, D'Artagnan wouldn't think that. How else are we to find out? Mm-hmm. Would be fine in the dark. Hey Ken, do you want to roll a wall magic search? I sure do. Out of one hundred. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Eighty-one. Okay. It's gonna be have to be a quick one. Okay. Talk amongst yourselves. Keep playing. So, so, should we? Who want? Who would want to go to? Should we have Shelby go check them out? I, th- I think all of us. Easy. All of us. Idea. Yes, that's a. That I was. I was thinking that as well. Yes, yes. All of us should go look together. At least go up to the lighthouse. I'm, I'm pretty sneaky, actually. I have a disguise kit, but I don't think it's going to help me look like a monster. I'm not doing it again. Um, I think it would be wise if Luca hits and then we follow. Agreed. If if this spot Luca, I have faith in her that she would be able to sneak away. All right. Um, how close are we to the lighthouse? It's still. You know that if you push through the night until it gets dark, you could get closer. But it's gonna be probably midnight one. In the morning, when you get there. Cool. cool. Um, so we do have quite a ways to go. Yeah. I'd say you're, because you just breached through the forest, you're somewhere around here. If you can see me pinging. Boop. Boop. ba Those yeah, grasshoppers well. sitting well, Kent. They're really no. <laughs> <laughs> they have like a really weird aftertaste and like Aww. No, okay, scrat. It's not as bad as doing a spoonful of like a million Scovilles of hot sauce. Oh yeah, that must have been awful. Can you imagine if you did that and then someone didn't mute your mic when you ran? That would be horrible. <laughs> Ah, ah. 
fucking first right. time streaming, guys. First time oh, streaming for guys. Streaming. Today is my first stream. Oh my god, how did I forget that today? <laughs> what damn? I'm natural. I'm feeling it. Session three, first time character. First, first. I've never played D and D before. I've never nope. DM before. I'm sorry, I totally derailed this. <laughs> You're fine. So, what is the plan? Are you guys going to? <clears throat> We Keep are going. going on an adventure with Luca leading the way up to the lighthouse to check on more monsters in a theory that Xavier has put towards us. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I, th yeah. I think it it makes sense to just get as close to the lighthouse as possible. Yeah. Kind of How like long do you go? Up. Do you just go right up to the lighthouse, keep going, or do you stop for the night at a certain location? Well, how far is the... How, wait, did it's someone already be, ask? It's going to be You're midnight gonna... one. Yeah, you're going to be pushing yeah. into the the dark of the night. In the dark of the night. In the dark of the find night. You, find you. Sorry. I'm done. <laughs> Sorry. So, should we set up camp or should we camp at the lighthouse? Is that Or is that even a possibility? Because it would get too dark before we get there, right? It probably would be way too dark. It is um, arguably safer to camp further away from the lighthouse where these beings may not be keeping a watch or potentially um, surveilling the area. If we're going to camp, I would say further away. But if we do not want to camp, then hi ho, let's go. Can go halfway until it gets dark. It is I dusk say, now. I say we go on until we find a good clearing or somewhere protective, and then we could set up camp maybe in like, oh, about two and a half hours from now. Somewhere that's well hidden and without any of them Death Seeker symbols. Question to the three of you, for I am interested. How good are you with darkness? Um, I am. I'm great. I didn't realize how good I was. <laughs> <laughs> I have um, some skills. Shelby's great at everything. <laughs> For Sorry. sure. Um, I don't know if Tritons can see in darkness. Do y'all have dark vision or what? Like. <laughs> um, it doesn't look like it. Uh -oh. I can have it. Oh. Okay, so Ken is blind. <laughs> I think I'm blind. What does yeah. that make any sense? Bottom of the ocean, you'd think you'd have dark vision. Right? Honestly, like, I have the... Oh, I just assumed you had one of those lights. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, can we make that cannon? It, it's underneath your little head wrap thing. It actually just goes, boing, and it comes out like that, and it's, during the night I have a little <laughs> flashlight, it'll break. Oh boy. That's why you oh. steer the ship, because you're the pilot. <laughs> Better pilot yet, light. I will say you have bioluminescent skin. Oh, wait, they do, because of my tattoos. Yeah. R remember we talked about that, right, right, right? Yes, my tattoos actually are light. Bio bioluminescent? Bio bioluminescent, yes. That works. Okay, so my tattoos look like this and the night, like these these lights. That's what my skin looks like. Perfect, but not as, like, on and off. They just, like... I will say, you're gonna, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Fuck. Like, um, so what's I... the plan? Do we camp out? Do we keep going? Do we go halfway camp out? Halfway camp out, I think. Halfway camp out. Camp, 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 camp out. Cool. You guys camp keep out. heading for another two and a half hours. You don't see that card again. You see what the trail that's left behind from them on the actual trail itself, uh, you can see the two grooves 
and the horse hooves in the ground. It looks like they ran for a little while and then eventually slowed down. You all um, do end up finding a little rocky outcrop where basically it's like a shelf over you and then it kind of carves in so you can camp down underneath there, be out of the elements, be tucked out of sight pretty well. Um, You can go in there and go hide. Make camp for the night. I assume Shelby will be making a bonfire, or do you want to be even more stealthy? Super stealthy. No bonfire? No bonfire. You make your camp for the night. Though, as you are making your beds, something weird happens. Uh, Shelby. No! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just give me a, uh, roll me a D2. A D2? A D2. Oh, should I flip, should I flip my coin? Uh, or flip a coin. Heads. Okay, okay I know what heads is. You know what heads is? You know, we've mm-hmm. got Liam O'Brien or, 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 or Sam, Sam Regal. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. I got it. I got it. Whoa. Hey, that just fluttered onto my hand with Sam Regal face up. Sam Regal? Yeah, I didn't because even catch it's it. the like, Regal. It landed on the back of my palm. Because it's the Regal. Uh oh. <laughs> it's only fitting. Because he voices such young characters. You're setting up your bed and everything like that, and then all of a sudden you're like, you feel a little bit more spry than you did before. It's weird. It's you. Your joints kind of hurt before, but now they're kind of a little bit better feel feel good feel real good yeah like nice. like 10 years of just slipped off your body and you regress 10 years and you look a little a little um, less just scrap um, how old are you um ten <laughs> Yeah, I started at 20. Oh no. Oh no. (laughs) Little baby Shelby. Oh Oh dear. I'll say your stats say the same, but you are a 10 year old Shelby. You have to protect him even more. We have to protect him. (laughs) Oh no. I was still going through puberty. I hadn't had a growth spurt yet. I'm only one foot four. Oh no! He's smaller! He's like Baby Yoda now! (gasps) Shelby! Shelby, what the fuck? (laughs) Don't curse! I don't know what happened! Why are you so small? I don't know! What? Javier is like looking very worriedly at like Luca. And D'Artagnan and back at Shelby, like, what the? Luca's just kind of like, and starts writing things down. How old are you? Twenty. Are you sure about that? And I'm just going to pull up my dagger to make him look through it. Oh, no. No. Come on. Oh, no. Well, oh. he was already very small, so... Um, does he does, does he lose his height? Yeah, he's he's like yeah. Oh. like do really we, he's like baby Yoda. Oh, do we have baby to carry you now? Would you like to be on? Go, would you like to travel on my back, on my shoulder? Can you carry him? I can. He's asleep. I'm gonna row us back. Uh, I I still think I'm the strongest in the party. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but yes. if you have legs like little match sticks. It will not work. You can't reach both oars. Yes. Shelby, you are so small. This is a problem. It is. Oh, now I'm cursed! (laughs) I... Maybe you're just having a reverse growth spurt. Maybe it will come back. Who knows? (laughs) Maybe in like ten years. Maybe if you sleep, you will <laughs> stretch out again. Okay, well, 
I guess I'll get my head down then. Yes, you are. Yes, I feel I get bigger, but the big again. Yes, uh, <coughs> good, good night. Should we dream, dream of uh, milk and being tall and all that stuff? Sometimes I wish upon stars. Maybe you can wish upon a star and hope that you could be taller. I've been doing that for years. It doesn't do anything. I don't have it in me to be a parent. He like whispers <laughs> to Luca. I don't need a parent. I've already grown up once. Well, you clear. You are clearly not. Okay, is he mentally? You're mentally twenty though. Like, yeah, so. yes, yeah, I'm twenty. All the thing, everything has stayed the same. He just is physically. 10 years younger. So we don't need to raise you again, right? We just need to wait for you to grow up. I sure hope not. I'm fine. I still have all of my songs and everything. And I can still play the, 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 the kazoo. Well, then, good night. Uh, I hope you uh, go, it's <laughs> go fast. It's the um, reverse. Like, like my eyes and the chair incident that, you know, was no longer an incident after a bit, so. Have hope, Shelby. Yes. Here's hope. Do, do you want to cuddle? No. Are you sure? It's cold out here for a ten-year-old body. I'm gonna go and get into my uh, my little <laughs> bed roll and like just wrap it around myself like three or four times. Oh no, I've done such a bad. <laughs> <laughs> and little Shelby, little tiny Shelby gets all curled up in the little <laughs> I think that's where we're gonna end the session because I can't anymore. I just can't. <laughs> I feel so bad. You <laughs> did this to us. I thought, okay, in fairness, meta-wise, I know he said no, and I thought he was older than that, so I was like, oh, this will be fine, whatever, he'll go back ten years, no big deal. <laughs> he's literally a still child gnome, though, I he's like, baby. You gave him baby disease. He turned up into baby Yoda, and he's so cute. <laughs> and you know what's funny? Baby Yoda is like 50 years old. I know! Shelby, I diagnose you with baby. Oh no! no. <laughs> okay. Well, everyone, uh, let's wrap this stream up nice and quick because, uh, frankly, I want to go and get some sleep before I get on the plane. Uh, so, uh, please check out my social links uh, and all of my sponsors. You can find us on the Mageham press booth this weekend, uh, flogging their stuff. Uh, also, you can find the deck of many on these links and Hero Forge. Uh, over here. Check them all out. It really does help me if you go over and use our codes and stuff and, and populate their, their stuff. Um, we need to make a new mini for Shelby. Oh for baby God. Shelby! We shall see. Well, <laughs> in the meantime, keep on evoking emotions, everyone, and we'll see you later on. Join us on the raid. Bye! <laughs>